I mean, obviously there's the people who do the actual work, which is usually the graduate students and postdocs, all right? Uh, but then there's also uh, the people who were instrumental in coming up with the idea and refining the idea and the approach as the results come in. Uh, and then there's uh, writing of the paper and editing of the paper, which uh, is usually a, a, a long, extensive process. Uh, and then, of course, uh, there's getting funding to pay for uh, the uh, scientific research to be done. And in my opinion, you have to do more than one of those. So you have to do two or more of those things to be counted as an author on a paper. Otherwise, maybe you might be just uh, for an acknowledgment or something like that. What I've sort of established is a rule of thumb over the years that if somebody does uh, their contribution, if you ask the question, if you leave out their contribution, would the paper still be published in that journal? Uh, and if you say, well, if we leave it out, it gets a little bit less certain, then it seems to me they're qualified to be an author on that paper. I usually think in terms of has somebody generated a result that is actually in the paper in some way or another? could be a figure, could be some numbers or tables, uh, could be some written material. But in some way or another, if somebody has contributed something that's in the paper, then they should be an author of that paper. We have an old rule in Germany going back to it. The first author of a paper is uh, somebody who actually wrote the paper. Um, that typically is also then the person who did the majority of the work. Um, but I tend to define it pretty broadly in whoever had an intellectual input into the paper. Um, ideas, contributions uh, should, in my opinion, be a part of the, the paper who really brought up ideas and work to it.